All right, mute. You ready? We're going to dive in one more time, second time for today. And let's dive in to, let's just go top to bottom, recently extracted. So now we are somewhere completely different. This is uh, another area entirely. This is the records office, so we're going to see uh, some political back and forth. Next on the agenda is proposed amendment to the cons uh, consolidation of the Noble Class Act. I'm tabling this one personally. You can find the relevant text in the eighth appendix. It's short, it's just filling the loophole in how the nobility stipend is distributed. I've mentioned this before. All right, keeping this short so we can get to the part of the agenda that's important. I can't believe I'm saying this, but what Kim said. I'll just read out the entire text of the amendment. The nobility stipend will only be distributed by patrilineal family lines as officially registered and not paid twice to married couples. Can't recall seeing any report on this ever. Is it really a widespread problem? You saying we should just, uh, we should let people break the spirit of the rules just because it's not widespread? That sound awful like, a lot like pedantry. So saying, uh, they're saying it's pedantic. They would go even, even go this far. Um, if I'm following what this all means, um, this is in regards to uh, having kids and how the uh, nobility was going to be taxed in recom to recom re recompense. That's what I mean. To recompense for um, to pay back the budget for giving out rewards for people who are making babies. Um, and so they were going to tax the upper class, but now they're like, how do you stipend those taxes? And so they're going to like double down on uh, easing the nobility one more time. I think that if I'm understanding this correctly, that might be what's happening. Um, yeah. All right, sorry. That's withdrawn. Does anyone object to this or can we have the vote and move on? Let the record indicate that there were no objections and therefore a vote will be automatically called. How does the council vote? Fine, the Council of Engineering and Science's favor, 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 favor. Everyone's in favor. I don't understand what's noteworthy about this. None passes unanimously. Moving on to the main topic of the agenda. Hey, good question. What the hell's noteworthy about this random vote? Especially because it agreed, uh, went through so easily. The stipend is distributed. Hmm. because there's a loophole in here. Billy stipend will only be distributed by patrilineal family lines as officially registered and not paid twice to married couples. So it won't be, parried, be uh, paid to both sides of the married couple. Does that mean that people won't get married? And then they will get paid twice? And be distributed by patrilineal family lines. So, down guy's side. Not matrilineal family lines, not down the lady's side. Saying we should let people break the spirit of the rules just because it's not widespread. So, there's obviously a loophole in there that's gonna be important. Don't know what it is. Meritocracy Day! Back in the records office. And it's apparently incredibly uncivilized. Let's formally begin day nine of debate on the Meritocracy Act. So meritocracy is rewarding someone for being, um, for being better than other people and having uh, a merit, merit, it's based on merit. So this person is more deserving because they have proven their worth in some way. And that is how they are uh, better politically than the other person. And so, to give people a job based on meritocracy would be to uh, give people the job based on their skill at that job. At least that's the idea. How it plays out socially is not necessarily the case. Meritocracy is a very comp complex thing um, because of how it dismisses a lot of other factors involved in uh, where skill comes from, where skill originates, and where that what that even means. So, Meritocracy Act. This probably going to be something that intersects in a lot of ways with a lot of these ideas that we've been talking about throughout the game. Is there any hope of this being the last day on the debate of the Meritocracy Act? Somewhere, uh, lines have been formed. 
unless this council really is the quote shit show unquote that President Park claims it to be, there shouldn't be any surprises. Everyone should be on the same page. Everyone had well better be on the same page. Are they gonna have the word shit show on the council records? Uh, yeah, twice now. It's hopeless. Three more years of debate. Can't wait. Good focus, please. I understand that several councillors have amendments they'd like to table. Very well, please refer to Appendix 201 for the text of it. Oh. Order, please continue. It states, essentially, that the meritocracy exams will be run exclusively by a committee chaired by the president of Mughungwa University, composed entirely of currently existing nobles, and that no person currently standing in the council will solicit or engage in any improper relationship with a member of the meritocracy committee with the purpose of falsifying exam results under penalty of essentially being barred from the exam. What does that mean? Nothing! The definition of improper relationship seems to be impossible for a family member to fulfill, is that correct? That's correct, so it's functionally useless. So, improper relationship um, doesn't mean anything. Great, I love it! Functionally useless is the best kind of function. It's all up on Zet. So what's the point? The point is, my entire goal proposing the Meritocracy Act was to create the appearance of radical change that's consistent with what President Park has proposed in a way that won't actually change the status quo. Well, that won't change the status quo, except for hanging anyone but the eight families here out to dry. Oh no, not this again. What the hell, Counselor Yang? Yeah, nobles to dry, how barbaric. Uh, who really cares about the nobility status of the Kang or Han families? They're not here. Like, I get the concern, it feels like betraying nobles for the sake of peasants, and I don't like it either, okay? But this is pretty clearly the best way out of this problem. Could stand to lose some dead weight anyway. Don't really like the tone of that. How <laughs> definitely how barbaric. What happened to no surprises? We've been here for nine days. Has it not been made clear that there are bigger concerns than tone, Counselor Smith? I would like I would think your primary concern is that we're able to pass a budget, Counselor. It is. Are there any objections to including Counselor O's amendment to the act? Only moral ones. Sorry, strike the statement from the record, no. When the amendment is added to the act, who else had an addition? I want to add an amendment that requires a member of each department to certify the exams. Okay, okay, so the people who are currently in charge of the exams right now are being hung out to dry by this amendment, and I think Smith's not happy with that. If I'm clear, if that makes sense, that's who's being hung out to dry. Order, there will be order! So Kim wants to add an amendment that requires a member of each department to certify the exams. What happened to no surprises? Don't do this! Kim, no! I'd like to second the motion for Counselor Kim not to do this to us. Uh, don't you want to make sure... It's unnecessary and transparent. The purpose of the act is to be subtle, and that is hardly consistent with subtle. The rules effectively allow Mugungwa University to ensure that as is anyway. Let's just move on right now, okay? Fine. Are there any other amendments in any counselors which table? So, uh, Kim is, without putting that amendment in, will not be safe. Uh, that is not going to be a safe thing necessarily. They're going to assume that that'll be the case, but the exams could be totally skewed towards any one department, any one way, and there's no oversight. Any other amendments? Actually, I do. Hey, Joe from Agriculture, what do you want? All right, it's co-authored by us. So, Joe and Lee. Culture and agriculture. Sounds nice, I like that. Agriculture culture. The text can be found in Appendices 191 to 192. The proposal is for all meritocracy exams to be broken into several brackets, and for the counselor position to be awarded the, to the oldest member of the top bracket. Does it make a difference? Absolutely! It simply ensures that someone can't take over a position just by scoring a few points better than one of us. This is smart kids in my family. <coughs> of course it makes a difference. Respecting elders is important. So, the meritocracy exams are led by age. Age, most importantly. That's what they're designing right here. I'd rather not the position be lost to them just because of a two-point difference, for instance. Okay, fair enough. That is a huge, huge difference. So, not necessarily meritocracy, 
but just meritocracy and then age. For whatever reason. Age first, and then who earns it. Don't want no punk kids coming in taking over. The item is added to the act, then. Any other proposed amendments? No. Be that the end is finally in sight? Finally, after 10,000 years of debate, it's time to vote. About time, how does the council vote on the amended act? Security in favor, culture in favor. Oh my, a terrible idea. In favor. The record show I'm not comfortable with it either. In favor. Everyone's all around. The Meritocracy Act passes unanimously. After nine days of debate, that concludes the agenda for this session. I'm personally going to motion to prorogue the uh, prorogue council until after exams are conducted as soon as the act is signed by the president. As soon as it's signed and as soon as that smug jerk is choked in his shit show crack. Mute. <laughs> I'll second the chief counselor's motion. <laughs> Assuming the act is signed with no problems, we'll reconvene after the meritocracy exam results are confirmed. See you in three months then. All right, council's dismissed. Meritocracy act, damn. That is huge. <clears throat> so, So Yi gets pay cut. That's not good. Uh, who was So Yi again? The, the scientist. Okay. So we've got our, our engineer. Apartment status. No time to make the beds this morning. All dishes washed. Drying rack full. Floors probably need to be swept at some point this week. I'll do it when I'm less annoyed. In the past month, in addition to the research work that is in my actual job description, I've organized three successful maintenance projects. Compile over a dozen sets of minutes and learned a recently resigned secretary's filing system is in order to explain to a co-worker. Say nothing of the many smaller contributions I've been asked to make, all of which unrelated to my research. This is the hardest work I've done in my life, and I am proud of what I've done. See? Her domestic life is really suffering because of her work. Oh my god, dishes washed, drying rack full. Mute, please. There are many more important things happening here. Despite this today, I had to take a pay cut. Damn it! So ye, please. I was called into the research chief's office. I expected the opposite. A commendation for exemplary work would have been warranted. Some manner of praise. Given the current economic circumstances, promotion would have been unlikely, regardless of the fact that it is very much due. Instead, my hourly pay will be reduced by 10% effective immediately. Sorry, it's nothing personal, he told me. Just between you and me, I've been really impressed by your work. I appreciate it all. Great, it's just a matter of department-wide policy. We've been asked to cut costs on all high-risk employees and put them towards training costs. I'm sure you understand. High risk. We label high risk. Let's see who gets cut. No, I said, I'm st I do not understand. Elaborate, in what manner am I high risk? It means at risk of quitting. I mean, really, it's because you've got more options now. We have to compensate for that somehow. Lately, <clears throat> because of that whole motherhood credit thing, we've been losing a lot of highly qualified women. I mean, I'm sure you understand. He said, I didn't. If you decide to quit and have children, it's going to be expensive to train a replacement, especially one as qualified as you. Bing. Even without motherhood credits involved, this is something that happens often today because of uh, whatever reason people decide at that time. Usually biological. I have no intention of having children at 24, I told him, or at any other point in the foreseeable future. The concern is unwarranted. <clears throat> well, statistically speaking, so we're bringing statistics in to prove that this lady is wrong and that her idea is wrong and that her, uh, what she values herself is of no concern to anything involved with her work or any of that. So, that's the best age to have children at. Mute! So the best age. Oh my god, 24. Statistically speaking, as a married woman, you are. Personally, I believe you, but because I know you well. I'm sure you're not lying. <sighs> But I can't make an exception for anyone who says that. If I did, anyone could say that, and we'd still have a huge problem. I was able to think of anything appropriate to say, I found the suggestion upsetting. I mean, you can see the logic in that, right? I can show you the actuarial reports if you'd like, he offered. So, dude bro cutting uh, pay is still in a tough situation anyway. This is what happens when you have these kinds of systemic changes. Please do that, I said after I returned home from work. I had a chance to review them, and unsurprisingly, they are consistent with what he had said. I could find no grounds under which to criticize their numbers. It seemed to be based on solid research. 
Uh, unfortunately, the research is sound because the research has been designed to be sound. But if you think it all checks out, you'll understand that it's fair, right? Just how it goes, statistically speaking, he said. I can't argue with the logic, I finally admitted. I hoped that when I got home, reports would be problematic and I could criticize them. I knew you'd be rational about it, he told me. That's why I'm glad you're still with us. You're definitely a logic-minded person. You understand how statistics work. Really, given how hard you work, I wouldn't be surprised if this was just a temporary loss. You're well on your way to a promotion. <sighs> I was uncertain as how to how to argue with that, too. I was intended to take it as a compliment, so it seemed like the only thing to do. He was right, of course. I can see the logic, and I'm unable to argue with it. Seeing the logic has yet to have any mitigating effect on the annoyance, on my annoyance at the matter. I guess a woman getting emotional about things like that can't be helped. <clears throat> Mute. 